everyone it's bailey and welcome to my truck uh, today is my last day of the first day of class um this semester i am graduating and i can't believe it i'm so nervous and excited but i thought i could bring y'all along on this journey with me so that means coming with me to class and i'm actually running a bit late so <laughs> let's go ahead and head into class Hello everyone, it is VoiceOver Bailey, and VoiceOver Bailey is here to provide the necessary context and information for this video. In this video, I take you along with me as I complete my capstone project, which is basically like my senior thesis. It's the final project I have to make to complete my studio of bachelor's art degree. So yeah, uh, we do a lot of time jumping throughout this video, so just be aware of that. It's not an extremely linear video, but it definitely takes you through my entire process of how I create um, large paintings like I had to do for this project. And it's something I've never really shared with, you know, the world, so I'm excited to share it. With that in mind, let's head back in time and see how I started. So the first thing I have to do for my capstone is create a presentation, uh, just going over my improvements over the years and also what I would like my capstone to be about. So this first slide, we are going back all the way to 2012. Um, I chose this drawing specifically because I knew pretty early on that I wanted my capstone to be about angels. In 2018, I redrew that one and I think you can see the improvement here. This is before I started college. This one and the next one are portraits of Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons. This one was done in 2018 and I remember being really proud of it when I made it. Done in 2020 or 2021, so I'm in UFIS now and I think you can see a big improvement here compared to the improvement in the first two. I just included some of the works from UFIS that were influenced by my capstone or had an influence on my capstone. Um, I drew a harpy because I knew Oh, wait, we're having a kitty scratch break. Excuse me. I drew a harpy because I knew I wanted my capstone to do with angels. I also included this one because it was a time that I used a different medium than I usually do. And I also made wings because of my capstone. I included this one because it actually influenced my capstone. I used to be really scared of drawing fabrics, but... I had this assignment in class and I feel like I knocked it out of the park, was really proud of it, and I'm no longer afraid of fabric. This one also influenced my capstone because it was when I explored a sort of painting style that I really gravitate to now and I really prefer. This one is sort of a transition into works I've made during my time at UFIS, but outside of my time at UFIS. I really enjoyed this one because it's a good comparison over my preferences between digital and traditional media. Here, I included some mythical creatures, a mythical creature because it's also something I really draw a lot. I included this one because I have a really deep connection to wolves. This is actually a character I created from my childhood. I included some landscapes just to show, again, my style preference when it comes to painting and traditional media. Here is a digital version, which um, is a lot more messier than my usual digital art, but I think it's because I really enjoyed the texture. This is the last landscape, I'm pretty sure, and I chose this one because I really, really enjoyed how the sky and mountains came out on it. I think it also shows how I really lean towards abstract art. Like, I really like to slightly abstract things. And this last one here, I just included because I think it is a good example of all of the skills I have learned at my time in UFIS. I feel like there are things from 2D design here, from my drawing classes, 
uh, from my painting classes. I just feel like it's a good painting that shows everything I've learned at UBITS. And these last few slides are going to be specifically over what I want my capstone to be about, which is these three spiritual beings that represent large ideas, but also parts of myself. Um, this is just some concept art. This is just the three girls. The, this is what I want my three paintings to feature, or at least something that relates to them just to show their like overall meanings and yeah I didn't really have any references for them so I did these recently just so I had like a base reference for them and here is just a little collage uh, of them because like I said I don't have any finished artwork of them the last two are just to show some improvement on my digital work and kind of this character itself and this last one is a really recent study I did, like this year, just simplifying shapes. And that is it! So, whew, thank you for letting me run through that with y'all before I go to class today. She's really staring, staring at us, huh? Oh my god, bitch. Oh my god, what's this? Oh my god. Let's get out of here. Oh, she's scared. Yeah. It's true, actually. Actually, everybody, <laughs> I do not wash my hair every day, and I'll agree with that sentiment. Welcome back. So the next part of my process is to create thumbnail sketches. Let's go. Yeah, thumbnail sketches. Um, they say to create multiple thumbnail sketches uh, to come up with multiple ideas. Even if you love your first idea, keep going. They just want more and more. So yeah, those were my thumbnail sketches, and then this is the collage I made after feedback from my professor. Um, and this collage was made with random images combined and altered. This project mostly focuses on the intersection between the natural and supernatural. So there is a lot of combination happening here. And it's a combination of natural elements into supernatural things or beings, which is the three characters I have created. Um, I have decided they are original characters because even though later on we'll get into all the references I chose and allude to, I guess, in these images, uh, they truly are unique and not like any of the original references or original deities that they reference. Oh no, does that make sense? I chose to reference different uh, religions and mythologies because I wanted to highlight the similarities uh, found throughout these very vastly different cultures and kind of connect to those who are different from me and kind of say, look, we're kind of believing the same thing. It's the same, but different, you know? I also just have a deep love and fascination with mythology in general, no matter where it's from. So these are things I'm kind of familiar with, not entirely, but I definitely did my research and I did not go into this blindly. I am still pulling references from cultures that aren't my own, which could be seen as a problem. So yeah, that was the biggest struggle and probably the biggest criticism of my project was kind of the balance between my personal beliefs and my personal experiences uh, versus these references I'm choosing to pull from cultures that are not my own. Uh, that I have no experience in growing up in the south of America so I have no experiences with a lot of the cultures referenced here um, the reference is really chosen 
space with respect and love uh, and admiration, but also to highlight the similarities between all of these different beliefs that seem so different from each other. I mean, over <laughs> the whole existence of humanity, religion has been the biggest dividing factor. And I just don't get it when there's a lot that is the same throughout different religions when it comes to basic beliefs and basic moral principles. And that's what these characters uh, represent. I created these characters for myself because I was kind of going through a spiritual limbo. I have been extremely spiritual for as long as I can remember. I partly blame my religious upbringing. I grew up Christian and went to church as a child and learned all the Bible lessons. But I've also had a really deep connection with animals and have felt a spirituality through animals and nature, really. For the majority of my life, I accepted my Christian teachings. I really enjoyed them, especially Jesus. Jesus is my home dog. Uh, but as I got older, I kind of started to not really vibe with things like how churches operated and just the general actions of the Christian community as a whole. And like a normal teenager, I rebelled against Christianity. I completely rejected it and I dived straight into the thing that it hated most, or, you know, young me thought it hated most, which is witchcraft and tarot and astrology. Unfortunately for me, Christianity is just diet paganism. <laughs> Okay, that one was just a JK. But I did find many, many similarities in paganism and other kind of religious that practice in witchcraft. And that was kind of the kickstart of this project. Anyways, Past Bailey is just finishing up with this black and white flat color of the subjects. And now we are going back to school. And here is my studio. Um, it was a mess when I got here, but some of it's mine, I'll admit. I cleaned it up, don't worry. Um, and I'm just showing you kind of the works I've been doing while spending time in the building. I'm not very good at recording, so I'm just kind of showing you all the random stuff I've done. I, I did get me painting the last little bit of uh, orange in this corner here, so yeah, you're welcome. I had some difficulty choosing what size I wanted my canvases to be, which kind of ended up in me getting my canvases kind of late, even though I had my idea down and basically everything ready. Um, so these are kind of the things I made to pass the time and also explore the characters and painting styles. Uh, painting styles, that's what I was exploring here. So yeah, not much else. Uh, just some reference photos up here on the wall and then a couple more pieces I did. And that is my studio. Can you check? Kitty passes check. Oh ho ho, a procreate speed paint, you know what that means. Yes, voiceover Bailey is back. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm uh, just fiddling with the final designs here. I was going to try to resketch it, but, to, you know, who, who needs that when I already have, you know, these guys right here ready to go. 
yeah there we go anyways now we can get to the best part let's be honest which is colors so here i am just laying out all of my colors digitally before i even touch the canvas uh, i find this is the best way for me to work mostly because digitally you can change colors really easily not very easily done uh traditionally and colors are also hard to make traditionally i am a color maker struggler anyways i thought during this part i could talk about my girls uh specifically my girls and not the deities they are attached to but kind of the original characters and what they represent for me so they don't really have names exactly i or kind of organize them by number and so the middle one would be represented by 1111 the one on the left with the wolf is represented by 222 and the one on the right with the horn is represented by 333. I refer to the middle one as Justice, to the second one as Artemis, and the last one I just refer to as Earth. Justice represents my belief in a moral good and the supernatural. Artemis represents my belief in duality and the spirituality of animals, and the Earth represents my belief in the cyclical nature of Earth and all of its luxuries. So here is my final color that I took to make my final. What? Okay guys, so this is my kind of mid-update. Mostly my canvases came in yesterday. <laughs> So that means I can get into the final paintings. So exciting. So I thought I would just do a little bit of a blog, vlog. I thought I would do a little bit of a vlog like I did to start out. Um, kind of to break up the speed painting mostly. And I'm not sure how I'm going to film actually painting i might figure it out but yeah this is kind of a switch over point in the video um, i'm about to go in and today we are priming the canvases and yeah then we'll get into painting the finals i'm so excited i can't believe it i i've been obsessed with this so we're ready we're ready to go i hope y'all guys are ready <clears throat> excuse me I would also just like to say right here while I have this excellent lighting um I really hope that this is kind of the start of my art career because I'm having so much fun doing this project like and I'm obsessive about it and I've never been singularly obsessive okay that's a lie I do this a lot but to be able to do it with art to have time specifically to make just some art pieces i'm so fucking excited about it and if i could continue to do this you don't know how many ideas i have like if i could continue to just do this and maybe not have to work at hobby lobby and buy a house like that would be great that would be amazing so yeah this is it this is the dream this is the beginning so yeah if you guys are here i really appreciate you um and Hopefully we go somewhere and hopefully you come with me. So yeah, yay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm very excited. So let's just go. <laughs> I am sorry to both those who do like ASMR and those who don't like ASMR because that was probably the worst ASMR ever. 
anyways i am just priming my panels here and this is kind of the only process i got and everything is about to happen really quickly just a warning because now that i have my canvases i am in maximum overdrive maximum overdrive -ya! trying to get them finished in time for finals <laughs> getting my canvases so late did cause me a lot of stress honestly especially at the end because i had some technical issues that happened that just caused even more stress but it is what it is Are truly in the home stretch now and you can tell by how much progress I am missing recording honestly after I get my sketches transferred and everything laid out this is the best part is where I truly lose myself you can see in a lot of the clips that I have a headphone in because I am jamming but yeah since I did most of my heavy lifting on the iPad with the color and line art uh, I can really let myself be more free and loose and abstract with the application uh, that goes for the line art and also the paint. I can focus more on the brush strokes and textures I create rather than making the right color or putting it in the right place. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is the references I chose as kind of the biggest inspirations that inspired the visual aspects of these characters. For the middle one, which is my 1111 or Justice, it is represented by archangels from Judaic Christian belief, um, Shiva the destroyer from Hinduism, and then lastly, uh, Confucianism, which I reference by using clothing from the Han Dynasty when Confucianism started in China. Um, and I chose these three because they represent ideas and beliefs that carry a moral code or guiding and are usually enforced in some way, either by a supernatural being or external power. The one on the left is represented by 222 and draws references from Artemis from Greek mythology, Shang-Chi from Chinese mythology, and Khonsu from Egyptian mythology. All of these either have a dualistic nature or represent animals being spiritual travelers. The last one on the right is represented by 333 and draws references from Sif from Norse mythology, um, a painting by Gustave Moreau called Delilah made in France, and also from Asa A from the Akon religion in Africa. I chose these because they each represent ideas like fertility and opulence, especially when it comes to the earth and nature itself. There are many, many more religions and beliefs that inspired these characters, but this is what I narrowed it down to. And here are the final paintings. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're finally done and at the end. I hope you enjoy kind of going with me through my process of creating these images and these concepts. Um, it was really fun to make and I'm very excited that it's done. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, share it, uh, comment if you have religion and what you think about it, because I like to talk about religion uh, with people who have different beliefs than me. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, just at the end here is actually my speech I gave for my capstone project for, you know, actual college and not for you too. Uh, I added it in here kind of for my friends and family, but feel free to watch it. Okay, bye! My name is Bailey Woodward and this is the Divine Trinity. The intersection between the natural and supernatural captured throughout our collective histories has always fascinated me. The creation of the Divine Trinity began with the exploration of different myths and religions found throughout the world. 
I really began to explore outside my own viewpoint when I rejected my Christian upbringing due to the hypocrisy of churches around me, turning me towards ideas like numerology, astrology, and tarot. From here, I began studying different myths and religions far from me in space and time. Through this exploration, I found many similarities that even connected back to my inherited beliefs. Inspired, I decided to create my own holy trinity, original characters created by combining different mythological and religious figures. Each was carefully chosen based on my most cherished beliefs and are a way for me to highlight the similarities between these cultures and also connect to those who are different from me. The divine trinity consists of my three main, uh, three primary deities, the divine, the traveler, and the earth. Using a combination of fluorescent acrylics and oil on wood panel, these characters are placed in a triptych to echo their religious purpose in sequential order. I combine my different historical and uh, my different historical references using a contemporary underpainting technique. Uh, this combination again is to highlight the similarities throughout these different cultures and inspire connection and understanding. These characters are my defense against a violent and divisive world. So I just also wanted to quickly go over. Obviously, the reference from many, many different cultures, but I chose three for each one to kind of like narrow it down a little bit. So I wanted to just share those with y'all. Um, for the first one, my primary deity, the first reference was archangels from Judaic religions. For me, obviously, it was Christianity that I discovered this one. And for me specifically, I connect to Archangel uh, Raghul, which is kind of hard to say. He's the Archangel of Justice. Uh, another Inspiration for this one was Shiva, the destroyer from Hinduism, who is the creation god in Hinduism. And then the last reference was actually towards uh, Confucianism in China during the um, Han Dynasty. This is like clothing found in an emperor's tomb in the Han Dynasty. Confucianism kind of ties to the same ideas. Um, for the traveler, the three references are Artemis from Greek mythology. Uh, I chose Artemis because she is represented with the moon, which is my tie to spirituality also because she has a kind of dualistic purpose. She's the goddess of childbirth, but also the goddess of virginity, so she's kind of dualistic that way. Also a twin, so there's that. Artemis and, oh, Shang-Chi, Shang -Chi from uh, Chinese mythology, uh, which is all again referenced in the moon, and also the hair in the moon specifically. Um, I, there's another animal I really connect to, and it's also my Chinese zodiac, so there's a connection there. And then the last reference was uh, Khonshu from Egyptian mythology. His is more so in like the combination of human figures and animal figures, and also the concept of the traveler being able to travel between spirit world and the physical world. And then the last one, uh, I referenced more um, less fantastical, less, you know, more um, earth bound uh, references. So I referenced. First, uh, Delilah by Gustave Moreau from France uh, for like kind of the figure drawing. And then I drew references for like the meaning for this character from uh, Sif from one astrology. Uh, that is with the hair and also the horn. Um, and then of course, all of them tied to the fertility and uh, earth, obviously nature and stuff like that. And then the last one is Asai A from Akan. I, I feel like I'm gonna pronounce it wrong. Uh, from Africa, it's an African goddess, and she represents the earth and fertility, and that is specified, uh, yeah, again, with the same kind of motifs. And I believe that is all I have to say, so I'm going to open it up for questions. Is there a reason why you wanted to do the central figure larger than the other two figures? Uh, yes, because they do, uh, I know it's kind of seem like they're out of order, but they do, I have them in an order, and this is number one. So this is kind of the one I have the deepest co connection to, I would say, is the one I know the most. Okay. Uh, something I noticed about the uh, divine was the, uh, the eyes really seem to be, they remind me of a a biblically accurate angel, you know, kind of the chaotic, especially the, the crown, and they yeah. represented that, the kind of the, the circle thing that goes on in that. I thought that was, that was beautiful. Was that kind of your inspiration behind it? Yes, and actually, the original inspiration was the wings for the biblically accurate angel. I was always going to do the wings like this, like that was always going to happen. My brother actually suggested the crown, because I had a different crown on her, and my brother suggested I do the ring with the eyes. Right. Like, oh yeah. That makes much more sense. So, I think that was a wonderful yeah. decision. Yeah, thank you. So is there a reason you painted two with her eyes closed and one with her eyes open? Mostly, 
Uh, this one with the eyes closed, she's kind of also a little bit more separate from these just because she represents the physical world and these represent more of the spiritual aspects of my beliefs. So I think that's the separation was kind of like on earth and the bees off earth. Okay, the triptych was the something that gave you motivation, got you moving, got you thinking. Can you share just a little bit with us about that? I was having a lot of uh, difficulties deciding like what kind of format I wanted to, I knew I wanted to do the characters, right? I didn't know what kind of format I wanted to do. I was thinking about doing portraits. I was thinking about doing like figure, actual making of unique figures and focusing more on the figures and the supernatural aspects. And that's when he referenced uh, trip takes. And when I looked at that art, I'm like, oh, I can set them in these like kind of scenes, but not really scenes. And it was kind of the perfect combination for all of those. Do you want to talk a little bit about your choice of color and palette? Color and palette, yeah. So they are supposed to be kind of uplifting and eye catching. They're supposed to represent ideas that, especially these two with their more brighter colors, are supposed to represent um, really really large ideas that are kind of hard for me to conceptualize and also verbalize. So I use kind of the bright colors to kind of reflect the big big ideas, basically. They're big concepts of bright colors. Well, I'm at a distance, but I'm not traveling. Is that an elvish ear? Elvish? I did. I did kind of give her an elf ear, yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's just kind of how I see the character, really. There's no, and she kind of like uh, not completely human either, so I didn't want to just think she was completely human. So I didn't want to make like a human here. I can't help but compare it to the walk you tried to do in uh, <laughs> advanced drawing. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, dang. The walk won, but you won here. Yeah. You're avoiding all of those things you were trying to incorporate into that piece serves this magnificently. You look at this and you know this isn't a trip to the wildlife preserve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was thinking about that. I'm like, man, that little walk so this one could have run for sure. Because I just struggle a lot harder. And it's kind of the same idea where I have so many different concepts and I kind of struggle putting them all together sometimes. And I think I did it pretty well here, so yeah. And then you had spent some time working on your design as far as how you describe the eye of them because you've got three things that to a certain extent have to function as three things and one thing as well. And so why don't you mention a little bit about the, the design work that you did there? Yeah, so that actually I do um, honestly I do a lot of my design work on digital. So I didn't incorporate a lot of digital aspects into this, but I do usually incorporate digital aspects into my work. So I do start with um, a collage of images uh, sourced from the internet. And um, I usually transform them quite a bit. They usually go through quite a bit of transformation of like a lot of these are m many images collaged into one. So <coughs> kind of how it starts is you kind of have either I'll start with a sketch and then find reference photos based on that, or if I find a reference photo I like, I'll kind of go from there. I think this one I did start with kind of placements of each characters and then went and found reference photos and then put them together. But yeah, it, during that collaging process is how the design. And I wanted to make sure, yeah, I wanted to make sure that triangle formation was there because I mean, three is a very important number for this project, and the triangle is a very important shape for the number three. So yeah.